You just published your new book, Den Gröna Bubblen, where you're warning for a bubbling green tech. So why did you write that book and why right now? Right now we have a chance to learn the lessons from the past. We've just been through a big credit boom and bust. And we're just about to make exactly the same mistake once again, except this time is with green energy. We're building up high levels of leverage into these new things that are unlikely to be sustainable commercially in the long term. And therefore there's a real risk that we might burn our fingers again and it will all come crashing down. Now the internet bubble is just a decade away and the housing bubble is maybe five years away. Do you see any similarities between the housing bubble and the internet bubble and the bubble we're seeing now? There's so many similarities between the green bubble and the credit bubble that is almost scary. All the bankers are using the same tricks of the trade, building up the same types of structures, insurance wrapper, etc. And we stand the, the real risk that we'll build up the same types of problems in the future, except this time is within green energy. What really puzzles me and surprises me is the fact that after a big credit boom and bust, well, so many people have suffered, ordinary people have suffered. We haven't learned very much and we haven't changed very much. And we are just about to make the same mistake once again. Now, I know you have strong feelings about how the government is subsidizing clean tech. What kind of problems do you see? The problem in green energy is that the politicians seem to be care more about what headlines their subsidy creates and what plants, green plants, they can stand in front of rather than looking at what is commercially sensible from a business point of view, what is truly sustainable energy. And truly sustainable energy is commercially sustainable energy. If nothing is done and there is actually is a green crash anyway, how will that affect us? If we don't take action right now, what will happen is you will start building up a green bubble and it will become bigger and bigger and bigger. And because a lot of these projects run with high degree of leverage, typically 80% of debt in these projects, you will see a lot of those come crashing down. Either because they get starved from funding, because the cost of capital goes up, because interest rate will rise, and therefore they, they, these projects become unsustainable in their own right. And you're left with two choices. You either keep feeding the beast, you keep feeding money into these projects through subsidies, or you have to pull the plug, in which case they crash. There's more people, 7 billion now on this earth. Emerging market is growing and have greater energy needs. So it will be heating up and we got to do something. Green energy is part of the solution. But the way we are, the green energy policies around the world are being implemented and written is wrong. Now it seems that uh, you almost feel that it's actually worse for the green sector if we keep doing what we're doing now instead of trying to change how we use subsidies and so on. Absolutely. It will have a, a negative effect because you will support and invest in projects that will not be sustainable or will require constant levels of support and subsidies. And that is not sustainable green energy. Now you're a, a private banker and you're a writer. You have a background as an executive director at Goldman Sachs, both in London and in New York. But you also have a total different, much more adventurous side. You have been skydiving over Mount Everest, and now you have an even bigger adventure going on, where you're going, actually going out in space. I'm an adventurer, I'm a pioneer. I love bro breaking world records and jumping out of perfectly good planes. Uh, but my greatest adventure has yet to come, and that includes my three trips to space. Um, I uh, want to push the boundary of space. I, I want to open up access to space so it becomes cheaper and more efficient and safer for more people to get out there. And that will also have some general benefits for humanity, such as cheaper medical experiments in space. Access to satellites will come cheaper and we'll all benefit from it. But most importantly, I hope to inspire children around the world that you can actually live out your dream if you just believe in it. Per, thanks for being here. And good luck in space. Thanks, Amika. Thank you.